Welcome to Stoughton Spotlight. I'm your host, Jeffrey Pickett. On this episode, we've brought together a panel of former selectmen who have served in the town of Stoughton to discuss uh, many current events in town, but primarily the attempt to recall three of the current members of the Board of Selectmen. And uh, just on the onset to uh, let the viewers know that, of course, there have been uh, many selectmen who have served over the course of the last uh, a uh, few decades, but we've brought uh, six in here who have served um, spanning years from 1979 all the way to just uh, this past year. So uh, this show is not designed to be either pro or against the recall, merely a conversation among the six selectmen we have here for them to share their views with you as they have the unique perspective of having sat on the Board of Selectmen in the Great Hall um, for uh, upwards of a combined probably more than 50 years when you add up everybody's totals of service. So let's introduce you to the panel at this time. And uh, first we have, let's, uh, we have Roy Cohen, who you'll know from Community Forum, of course. Uh, Joe McCriskey, who's the most recent member of the Board of Selectmen. His term just ended uh, this past April. Cynthia Walsh, Antonio Souza, Ed Felice and John Anderson. So I want to thank the six of you for joining me this, uh, on this episode. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. And so uh, let's get right into uh, the conversation. Uh, of course, there's a recall effort that's being organized uh, to attempt to recall the chairman of the Board of Selectmen, uh, David Souza, the vice chairman, Bob Cohn, and member, Peter Brown. And so uh, let's talk. Um, what your views are on the recall effort. We'll start right from uh, with that topic. So who would like to tackle that first? Well, I can jump in if you'd like, uh, only because I'm probably the only one. I'm sure I'm the only one that has ever been recalled, uh, not from the Board of Selectmen, but from the school committee. And I'd kind of like to preface that by just saying there's a past, present, and future. And I'm not talking about today's past, present, and future. I'm talking about 20 years ago and what happened, what led to the recall and the results therein. <clears throat> uh, I had moved back from New Hampshire and at that time I ran for town meeting rep and I was successful. And I watched town meeting and uh, I was a little bit dismayed at what I was seeing so I decided that I would uh, take out papers and run for the school committee at that time. Well, simultaneous to that there was a recall petition that was set up and uh, the reason for that was twofold. One, that the school committee uh, was charged with malfeasance as it related to teacher pay raises. And the second one was uh, the uh, ceiling collapse in the high school uh, cafeteria, which was under renovation. Thank God it was in June of that year and not in uh, September or October when the, the kids would be there. The, uh, the recall petition uh, was simultaneously, as I said. And what had happened with that, it was an interesting time because four of us um, went in on a new election. One member, Attorney Joe Clements, was appointed because one of the current members of the school board had resigned. So there was four of us that were running. And I will tell you that I didn't know the other three until we were elected. So anyway, the issues at that time were, were threefold, the big issues. One, um, in uh, that year, 20 years ago, uh, Roosevelt uh, Birmingham had passed through the, uh, through the state educational reform. And the biggest thing about that at that time was to limit some of the duties of the school board. And that left us with the fact that anybody that is hired uh, in the school system is hired by the uh, uh, superintendent of schools. The board of selectmen, I mean, excuse me, the board of uh, uh, the school board only hires a superintendent, assistant superintendent, and SPED director. So that was one part. The second part was Jack Murray, who we all know was superintendent of schools, uh, went out on a medical. He was not fit to serve in that capacity because of medical issues, and we had to uh, replace and uh, uh, assign a new superintendent of schools, which we did by unanimous vote, and that was Dr. Uh, Jeff Fanning. The third one is the most contentious, and that was the fact that it was coming before the, the uh, school board from uh, faculty, not from us down, but from them up, 
that there was a, a potential disconnect between the student curriculum in uh, coming from elementary into uh, um, not middle school, uh, junior, high. junior high, and then into high school. And it was decided and studied and it was decided this was a good idea and now it rested with the uh, school board as to how we get that done. So what we had suggested doing is to take the existing junior high school and we would have three houses, two in the junior high, one in the west school, each with a headmaster and then a certified middle school uh, principal that would run all three. The idea was that we would have a campus, we would run students across the backyard as a discipline dictator. If it was English over there, they'd go over there. If they came back here for science, they'd come back here. And uh, I guess the thrust of most of the recall was how dare we close an elementary school. Are we talking uh, early 90s at this point? Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, 92 I think it was. And anyway, uh, so anyway, uh, there was a lot of dissension there, how dare the uh, school committee close an elementary school. Well, given your numbers, we had appropriated probably $350,000 to take the West School and put furniture in, in there that was indigenous to the size of those kids that would be coming in from middle school. And then uh, that uh, blossomed into about a million six to take the uh, ju existing junior high and do all the modifications. I'm trying to wrap it up. Sure. Are you trying to? No, I was just going to ask what sure. more, you know, germane to this current recall, what that experience for you was like to go through a recall. Well, I won't take the personal thing as what, as what it did for me, but uh, that was what the precedent was. And uh, it was a very contentious time. Uh, it's very difficult. I learned this at that time. That it's very difficult to turn back an angry vote. Uh, and uh, uh, so the recall went. And, uh, and we were out. But by vote of the board of the, of the uh, school committee that I was on, <coughs> we did pursue and did uh, allow the middle school concept to go in at that time. Mm -hmm. Most of the towns around us all had middle schools anyway. And then the second one is through the, vo the vote of the board that I was on unanimously, we, we named that after Bob O'Donnell, Dr. Bob O'Donnell, uh, in honor of. He was alive at the time, he was the first principal. Mm -hmm. But it was a very, very contentious time. Now, so that takes you from the past, the, the present, and the future. After the recall, uh, the modifications of the school went in. I think that 350 went up to like a million six. There was some money that was coming back from state that they got and so on. But the interesting thing is the middle school persisted. It went through. So that was a good thing that happened by that committee. And thank God for the incoming committee to do it. So that gives you a little bit of a perspective of what happened. Probably, Cynthia, you could tell me, I think that was probably the first recall ever in the town of Stoughton that I know of. No, well, the first two were the school committee. Yeah, that was us. So I, I think in a nutshell, that kind of, uh, uh, kind of did we did, what we did at the, the past, the present, and the future. Sure, well, so, you know, leading up to that, that was one recall uh, the town faced, and. Uh, let's discuss this current one and you know I see many of you either at the meetings or in, you know involved still in town government so uh, what's your take on this current recall and if you feel that it should go forward or you know they're still in the process as we're filming of collecting signatures or you know if you feel that, uh, that this recall should not uh, not go forward so um, I'll start with uh, I mean if you don't mind Cynthia you're at Every meeting, and I'll, I'll, you've been—you have a front row seat, literally. So I'll—I'll—I'll I'll, um, I'll start with you. Well, I, as far as I know, they haven't turned in the signatures yet. As of filming today, correct. And I—I want to clear. I haven't signed any of the real recall petitions at this point. Um, the the situation is bad. The situation is ugly. But I don't see it improving by simply taking three members off and putting three new members on, none of whom have ever been on a board of selectmen. And I've said, I say this over and over again, and I lose over and over again, but the town can't go forward if we constantly have people that don't know what they're doing and spend most of their time sniping and who do they snipe at? It doesn't matter who the town manager is. The history of being town manager of Stoughton has been a rocky one 
except for in the in my experience phil farrington was here the longest but i think just because he had the thickest skin <laughs> and he also uh knew a lot of because he was from stoughton or lived in stoughton he knew where a lot of the bodies were buried too um which always is helpful so um um, this whole emphasis on the town manager. Stoughton doesn't have, uh, being Stoughton's town manager is not what I'd call a, um, a long-term position. So I don't know who they're going to snipe at uh, next. It concerns me that they're, um, because of the lack of experience of the members, there's a real lack of knowledge of process about um, advertising a position interviewing people, the search process, then you, you do your final interviews, and then you make a selection. You can't be open and transparent if the first people know of when a candidate is <coughs> of going to be appointed is when the night he's appointed. And when you have members of the board who aren't even aware, it really, I don't know how the, the people in town can be confident Let's face it, 83% of the people in April said and stayed home. They didn't bother to vote. So I can imagine with this recall, uh, although I've seen a few signs, there certainly doesn't seem to be the groundswell there was in, in the past. Um, when you go to the meetings, to the last recall in, 2000, in 25, uh, 2005, I mean, those selectmen's meetings were packed, standing room only, lots of angry people. And now we have seven. <laughs> so um, I really think that it's very disruptive. And it does, no one's going to learn any lessons from this, except for the, for the public. The people that don't vote are going to learn. Uh, they're going to say, wake up on whatever morning it is and go, oh, what, what is it that I didn't do that I should have done? All right, so. Well, I also lived through a recall even though I was not the one being recalled, it was a lot of anger. And I think by having the recall, maybe a few things were accomplished because a couple of selectmen were ousted. But I think it created more problems with this Stoughton residence than anything else. And I think in the, in the end, I don't think anybody's going to win. And I think um, we have an elite group of people in Stoughton that are really the ones that are pushing. That's not to say what's going on in the board is correct because I have a lot of problems with some of the things, the way they're being done, just like Cindy mentioned. Uh, I don't agree with it. If I was part of that, I would have tried to do it different, but that's the way they did it. And by just replacing three bodies, I don't think it's going to solve any of our problem, and it's only going to have more problems in town among the residents. And uh, in the long term, I don't think it's going to help anything. Joe? I guess I'll throw the toughest one out. I think the recall's a joke. Um, <laughs> I, I do, Tony. I mean, oh, this yeah. is Stoughton being Stoughton. And <clears throat> mean more than anyone here, um, I could care less if they were all recalled, okay, because it, w it was a personal thing where I had a board of selectmen issue me a letter where they played judge and jury, didn't get my side of the story, talk talked about me with a department head in executive session, only to come on and be interviewed by Jeff, and then people said, oh wow, I knew there was another side of his story. So, you know, but what they're doing is the same thing with the people that are writing this BS, okay? They've been referred to as the West Street Mafia, um, the shadow government, the undercover government. Um, one selectman referred to them as a, uh, the general and, uh, and his captains, you know, and they don't get it, is that that group of people a Stoughton residents like the rest of us who love their town the way that we do. They're active in the town. They just have a different vision for the town and of course a different way of doing it. What they're doing with information that's written here, and I'd love to have the time to go through and just shoot bullets through this thing, is they're doing exactly the same thing with this group of naming their candidates. The names are all similar. We've known these names in town for years and they decided that we know what's better for the residents than themselves, okay? And I'm sorry, I'm not gonna change one group for another group who there are active people in that group as well that I don't trust because they've done the same thing. We have two former selectmen here that sat in a meeting where a town manager was appointed on an off night in a different room 
with no cameras and no recording secretary. And the vote was questioned as to whether a person was appointed on a two to two vote. Okay, so the debate was there. We also had two former selectmen that are on the other side of this argument who flew into the back of the hall when Francis Crimmins was being appointed town manager and complained about the process. And they themselves didn't have a process. What they keep talking about, this group of people that are you know, back in the recall, is the process, the process, the process. Well, show me a process. The town charter they refer to, of all these things that they're doing wrong and not complying with the charter. The charter is so broad that it's pathetic. And I think we'd all agree that the, it's not a cut in stone. They're talking about the town manager's contract. A judge already said the town manager is not the town manager. His contract ended. He's no longer an employee. The town, and I was arguing, I thought the town charter would have had a say there, but the judge said, no, it doesn't. Okay, so let that go. The town manager is going to go the way it is. I, I've seen ads on, of, of pro Stephen Anastas. I'll say it right here, right now, that I would follow Stephen Anastas and hell with two five gallon pails of water. He's the first true businessman that we've had look at this, you know, and to do it from a business standpoint. This recall is a joke. The people who should be mad right now are the people that don't vote. There were all thousands of people that come out to vote for the new high school and didn't vote in subsequent elections. They need to get out and vote and have their voice heard. I'm not going to give my power to a group of people to name their candidates who I know are going to report to them because this is just one group against the other. There's an, an election coming up in April. If that group wants to have their candidates run, they should have that. And if they win, they will get the majority. Well, they make the argument that if to wait would be too long and that there could be too much done between now and April. Well, so what would you say? Well, I, th that I think that's bull because some of the things they're stating, there was a letter allegedly sent out by the developer of the school concerned with how he was going to be paid. I understand I was told the letter didn't show a date and it was more of a procedural thing, not than a threat. Uh, there's quotes in here of people trying to pull funding and say that these building projects you know, are at risk now. That's not true, okay? Because the state is funding a portion of our high school. They're not gonna allow this to be a cluster. They could step in and take it over and eliminate everybody and see it through, okay? So these things that they're saying are nothing but fear tactics. They're trying to insert their visions of why they want to do the recall as it's factual, and it's not. I mean, I'm not going to take over the whole debate because I know I could if I keep going, and, you know, everybody should have a, a chance, but, you know, as we go through, I just, well, this is nothing more than Stoughton being Stoughton. And if we ever get to a point, and, and I've done this, I have never served with any group of people. I've always, and I love it that way. And I've had my ass handed to you. You all know I've lost elections, I've won elections. I love it that way because I'm not, tied to anybody but the people that vote for me. The Board of Selectmen have done things that I believe are unethical, not illegal. I would have done it differently. I would listen to people. I would engage. I can talk to people on this other side. There are a few people I actually like, just disagree with politically. But again, this is something Bob Mullen made at a statement at um, one of the Selectmen's meeting, and he said to the board, and I believe he meant it to the other group as well, is that we gotta cut this stuff out. We're not, as elected officials, doing the job of the people who have put us in office. We've got our egos here, we've got our own agendas here, and, it, the, and both sides of this recall are guilty of it. And the people that are paying the bills are gonna get, get hit for it. Oh, so we haven't heard from Ed or Roy yet, so either of you like to... Uh... Yeah, I'd like to jump in. Uh, some of the things that uh, Joe said I agree with, I guess I agree with some of the things that each of the speakers have said. Um, I kind of looked at it in a different direction to see, uh, in my opinion, how, how did this all start? And I did write a few notes to myself so that I wouldn't get too far off track, which I sometimes do. Yeah, uh, well, that's be, happened in the be past. kind to yourself, please. Yeah. So, but in my opinion, I think what's happening here, uh, and there is an undercurrent, I guess, whatever term you want to give that. And, uh, what I see going on here is a minority trying to overturn the existing majority that was legally voted in past elections. And I f 
further look at it is these folks are attempting to become the new ruling class of the town of Stoke. And I just want to give you a couple of things here to kind of back up how I came to that conclusion into how I see the town, uh, Mr. Hartman, uh, probably when he was brought in, I think the genesis of this whole thing is when Mr. Hartman was brought on board. And just to kind of hit the, I'll put my little glasses so I can uh, hopefully, hopefully read. So I, I, I think Mr. Hartman's been kind of a tool. You know, um, when he was hired back in the day, um, I think John Anzarino was on the board at that time, and within months of his hiring, uh, I, I, as I recall, Mr. Anzarino led a charge to extend his contract. I think it was here like three months, and they wanted to give him a brace of brand new three-year three contract. And then there was a, a situation where I was just near uh, John's re-election time, and there was a meeting at Town Hall, I remember this, and it was, you talk about a contentious meeting, and, and I'll tell you why it was so. Uh, John was up there, I believe he was the chairman at the time, and he wanted to give Mr. Hartman a huge raise, something like 10 grand, things in my mind. Cynthia was probably a little better than remembering this up than I am. Well, you were and on the board, Cynthia, is that fact check? You were on the board at the time, is that? Uh, everyone gets to tell their own story. Yes, okay. Oh, all right, let me, let me finish. This is just from the way I saw everything. Okay. So uh, that night, there was a room full of uh, town employees, the various unions were represented and so forth. And at the time, these folks were trying to get, you know, their raise and their contracts approved. And it became very contentious when this motion was made to give this additional money to Mr. Hartman. And some of the charges that we see these people making, they did the same thing. They threatened the employees to, that they were going to be removed if they didn't keep quiet. And we see that's supposedly one of the charges that's going on now. So from that, uh, about a month later, there was an election, and uh, the apple cart of these folks got upset because David Souza came along, you know, a novice out of nowhere, and handed John probably one of the biggest defeats that I can think of in the history of Stoughton, where he got, I think he came in like third. So Mr. Souza comes in. So, uh, you know, suddenly there's a, there's a problem with, this, with, the, the, with that group of uh, people. So... Uh, Ed, can I can on one thing? I'm sorry. Sure. On that, if you remember, on that in this room, Mr. Vanzavino was asked in the debate forum if there had been ongoing at this time are there ongoing conversations with the town manager regarding an extension of his contract, and he did not say no, mm -hmm. and he did not say yes. He said not at this time or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Three days later, they signed the, the contract, yeah. Yeah. and he was called out on it. Right. You know, and so and the the thing was again, it's not that it's dishonest, yeah. but it sure as has less than genuine with the right. information, and that's what's going on here on both so, sides. So, so just so I can continue just a bit, I can wrap it up in a minute. So, so the next event that cramped their style was Peter Brown. Peter Brown again, another person basically comes out of nowhere. He runs a sticker campaign, unheard of. Whoever wins a sticker campaign. He beats T.J. Recupero, a well-known person in town. I think T.J. May, may have been chairman of the board then. So you start reading this, that the people didn't like what this, you know, if you want to call it shadow gun, whatever you want to call them, they didn't like what was going on over here. Uh, so that happens. So, he not, so these loyalists are being knocked to the, knocked to the side. And Zabina was the loyalist for Hartman, he's gone. T.J. a loyalist for Hartman, he's gone. So last spring, we have another election in Son of a Gun. David Sousa gets reelected again, albeit he finishes in second place, but he's reelected. And he knocks out the next person, Rick Hill, another Hartman loyalist. So now you have all these things that have happened, and these people are saying, geez, what's going on here? You know, we're, we're the smartest people in the room. We're all, you know, the intelligence of the town. We live on West Street. We live on... Palisades and all these other places, you know, we, we know everything, all these other people are pretty stupid. What's going on here? So, it, it just fits to the way I think that this, this is uh, symptomatic of what, what's being done here. And a lot of this is, again, revolves around the town. So now they are, they're at a point now and they say, well, what are we going to do about this? We've lost basically three elections 
And even though we're helping the town manager, we're, we're still losing elections. So they say, let's do a recall. Well, could you make the argument? Let's though? do a recall. Let's right. let's let's conjure up anything we can think of, and we'll just throw it out there. And Joe reputed some of the uh, statements he, uh, just a few minutes ago, and we'll see what we can stick. You know, there's no saying that if you tell a lie long enough and often enough, people are going to believe it. And I think this is part of the thing. Kind of goes along with Joe is saying that a lot of this stuff is BS, and they're using this to wrest power. And my feeling is that in so doing, they're trying to nullify the votes of the people that voted not only for the three people being recalled, but all five of these people had legitimate uh, vote tallies to win. So who are these people to say that, you know, we don't like what's going on, oh, my feelings were hurt, or whatever like that, and people are doing the same thing, in the, have done the same thing in the past, as I've kind of tried to outline quickly, that we're accusing these people of doing. Well, could you make the argument, though, that looking at the past election court as an example of those results, that the balance of power on the board is actually, the pendulum is actually swinging more towards the middle as the voters had an opportunity, I think, to deliver a four to one majority or a three to two majority on either side. And they chose to split their ticket essentially with Michael yeah. Sullivan and, and David Souza. So the uh, Souza, Cohn, and Brown had the potential to add a fourth vote to their majority and didn't weren't able to pick up that well, vote, the reason so they weren't able it to became a three to two board. So aren't, wouldn't that kind of indicate then that no. things are swinging more towards? Not necessarily. The, the, the reason that happened was that Mr. Sullivan, with all due respect, was pretty much chosen by Mr. O'Regan to run. So, and you can see it at the meetings now. You know, Bob says something, and Mr. Sullivan's hands go. But I had thought, like you did initially, I didn't vote, for, and I'll be honest, I didn't vote for Mr. Sullivan because I didn't know him. I was, who is this guy? He's never involved in it. I didn't know, know him. Seemed to be a very presentable person. Uh, I went to a couple of debates, very knowledgeable, uh, good presentation, so on and so on. And I kind of thought that, you know, maybe with this person, because I didn't know the, at that time the relationship with him and O'Regan, and I said, gee, maybe this would be the guy that could kind of bridge the two groups. But had I known, well, I know now, I, I would have said, gee, you know, you, you're kidding yourself. And it's a shame, but, but most of the, Roy, you know, too, I mean, uh, well, we had a seven man board at one time, but th there's always that, there's always the, uh, you know, three, two, or we had, what, four, three sometimes. Right. But, uh, you know, uh, and we had, we had seven people arguing issues, but if you lost, you went home and had a, or you went home and had a cup of coffee with the guys, and, you know, you didn't go to recall someone because you didn't agree with them. And I agree with Roy sometimes, well, we're, we're, we sometimes we didn't. We haven't heard from Roy yet, so... so you don't want to hear from me. Sure you <laughs> do. <laughs> I, I, um, I, I think it's a shame that it's gotten this far, to be honest with you. And I hear, I hear a lot of comments from Eddie, from Cynthia and Joe, and from you, John. Not you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I just think that there's a beginning to the story that's being ignored, although you're, you, Eddie, you've uh, kind of hit it. Things that have happened at the beginning should have been taken care of at the beginning instead of letting it just lie the way it is and getting worse and worse and worse to the point of where it is now. What are they going to accomplish if, it, if, if the, uh, it, it's like a dog chasing a car? It catches the car, but then what does it do? It, it's, not, it's not going to solve anything. The right people have to run. That's the major thing. You got it at this level. You got it. I'm not going to get political tonight, but you got <laughs> it at the top level in the country. Um, you've got to get people who care to run, not for any other reason but their desire to help the town. Uh, I just. But they'll all say that too, Roy. They all say that, and then we go right back to what we're dealing with now. Well, we we Eddie mentioned the fact that we we sat on a seven-person board. Well, that board was anti-business. The majority, and I, I personally, uh, I've never been that way. I've always been pro-business, but I wasn't in a position to try to get things going until the board went from seven down to five, and then all of a sudden it switched. It became pro-business. We had, we had an instance uh, of Reebok coming to Stoughton once the water was turned loose by the MWRA for the purpose of developing the industrial park. We had, we had Reebok come before us. They wanted a water connection. Well, that was the five-person board that I was the chairman of, and I called for a vote after the presentation, and it was two to two. 
I, I looked at I looked at Dan McGarry, who was one of the negative uh, voters on the thing. I said, "What are you crazy? It's a million dollars a year in tax revenue. No, no schools, no police, no fire. They're gone at five o'clock." And his response to me was, "I didn't move to Stoughton to have it become a city. I'll never forget that. <laughs> and that 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 is the most asinine state. And where's Dan McGarry now? He's someplace else. That's where they all are. They all are. <laughs> and, and it's just can I." Wait, I, I think Another there. thing, I don't think these people that are pro-recall are so much in favor of Mr. Hartman. I think there's so much uh, against David and the board that's always treated to vote. They want to get at him because they're not getting his own way. I don't think there's so much for, for Mr. Hartman, personally. I mean, I personally don't know Mr. Hartman. I can't say anything good or bad about him. But I think there's so much against David and Pete and uh, Mr. Cohen that... Uh, they want them out at any cost so they can get their own agenda going. I think that's exactly what it is. Well, so yeah. there's all six of you in some combination have served with one another, if I'm correct. Uh, Roy and Cynthia and Ed all served together, and, and Joe and Tony served together, and John and, and Joe served and together, Cynthia. and John and Cynthia served together, and Cynthia and Joe have served together, so you're all in an in inter, intertangled web The only of one I didn't <laughs> serve with was, was um, my best friend here. <laughs> so, the, My neighbor. So my neighbor. the point of that was how you guys know how to make relationships on the board, how to uh, work together. So I want to ask your, to give your advice to the current board of selectmen on how to bridge the gap, on how to move forward, on how to work together. I think the, and that's along what I've been thinking too, is when did they become such rigid, boxed in people? They don't seem to, there's a lot of uh, literally snarling going on. Um, we did that though. But what, <laughs> yeah, once but in a while, but not, co not constant. And no. you do have to listen to the other person's point of view. But if you just sit there going, nee, 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 nothing's getting accomplished. And that's, that's my biggest concern with this board is it's all, if you don't get along and you don't go out for pizza afterwards, fine. But could you just start moving the town forward? And you can't move the town forward with all of these little things. There are procedures. Maybe it's not in the charter, but you do. When you know six months ahead of time that somebody's term is up, that somebody's contract is up, you don't start looking for his replacement the day before. That was You know, it, yeah, he's, he's leaving the 30th so that we have a special meeting on the 29th to appoint someone. That's, that's not running the town like a business or like a family or like anything. I mean, you do a search, you have a committee, I'm wondering how many people would actually apply to be Stoughton's town manager. Plenty. Uh, I mean, if you had a lot of people apply, uh, when we hired, when, when, way back in the 80s, when we hired Pat Highland, there were like 50 people. So we had a search committee, narrow it down, and then we interviewed, we interviewed three different um, meetings. We had them on Saturday, which we were criticized for now, but we had them on Saturday so that working people could be there. <coughs> Selectmen's meetings now are starting at 6.30. A lot of people are still on the highway trying to get home. So um, we interviewed, there were public interviews. The other thing was, was consistency. We asked the same questions of each candidate. We didn't go, well, Sam, Oh yeah, you, you, your brother-in-law and my sister-in-law used to work, and, you know, and then the other one, oh, uh, Mr. Uh, gu, uh, gu, uh, gu, how do you pronounce that? And it's so obvious to the people in the audience that there's no, uh, there's no fundamental fairness going on. It's the good old boy type thing. And some of us are getting tired of paying for the good old boy's mistakes. So uh, John, you had your hand up. Yeah, and we'll uh, go just a couple of things. You know, I'm probably pretty fastidious. I study a lot before I go to a meeting and so on. And thank you for SMAC for doing their uh, video on demand. Because this afternoon, post-surgery, I turned that on and I watched the beginning of the Sluckman's meeting Hopefully last you night. weren't painkillers. Yes, I was. <laughs> and uh, I could give an aspirin a headache. But in any event, uh, 
One of the things that really concerns me, and I don't want to see this get lost, because we're talking about people, and well, two things. One, whoever's being uh, put on the ballot, I know in the school committee when that happened, you had to vote two ways. One, to vote for the recall, the yes or no, vote for the candidate, John Anderson, and so and so. Paul Landry and so and so. So that's the way the ballot was. I don't know how it. It is. will be the same. It, it's the same way, but more importantly, in watching that last night, I was uh, somewhat struck when there was uh, a little bit of discussion about the uh, uh, bond issue that is coming up. And I think, if my memory serves me correct, because I couldn't replay it, I think it's something like thirty-five million dollars to fund. This is the second stage, I believe, for the library and the school. So I thought a lot about that, and I said, well, if I were bond council, and if I had $35 million that I'm going to give or appropriate for the town of Stoughton, I think I'd take a look at the town of Stoughton. I would be very, very surprised if they're not looking and saying, wait a minute, we're going to have $35 million going into the town of Stoughton, and they're having a recall election, and they're calling for a special town meeting. What is going on? Is this a good place for us to put that? Now, I don't live in Stoughton anymore. I live in Plymouth. But common sense says to me, if somebody's going to give me some money, bond, bond council or the bonding company, and they look at disarray in the town of Stoughton, I'd be a little bit cautious of what you're doing. And I think it was Selectman uh, Cohn that said, you know, 1% one, 1 shift in that bond rating that we have. We, when we left, I think, Joe, we were A1, were mm -hmm. we not? Yeah. I don't know where we are yeah, now. I, I believe it was double A plus. One, maybe, it was. Yes. maybe it was. Maybe it was. higher. It was very so, good. so when you start doing that internal stuff and you start saying, well, we'll get rid of these people, do whatever we want to do, it, to me, somebody sitting on the outside, I guess I sit on the outside because I live in Plymouth now, you look at it and say, it's disarray. There's no, I have no idea who's running against who won, well, I know who the three are, potentially they're going to uh, uh, run, but you have to look at those potential candidates that are coming along. Who are they? What are they? What's their agenda? And what's their belief? And as I said when I gave you the synopsis about the recall of the school committee, it's very difficult to turn away a, uh, an angry vote. It's almost impossible. And yet the committee that I was elected to on the recall, we ended up, as I said, I didn't know any of these guys. But we ended up with a five-member board. We had one attorney. We had two educators, Dr. Joe Harrington, professor up at uh, Framingham State. Alan Mills, who was a middle school math teacher in Westwood, I believe. Paul Landry worked for a national company, McDonald's. I worked for a national company that you never heard of, but we were national in scope. So you had two in business, two in education, an attorney. You couldn't ask for a better result coming out of that recall. Now you're going to be coming into another recall. You've got to look at those potential candidates. Oh, yeah. I, think, um, I think the bond thing is, is a loss leader, too, because they don't look at the Board of Selectmen. And they, they don't look at the town yeah. manager. They look at the town's Spanish. fiscal records. And we've had the same town accountant for decades. We have the auditor. All the recommendations that um, they've made over the years, we've hired personnel, an office that used to have one person in it, now there's, there's four. So that's what they look at, stability. They also look at how much money What's do we question? have for- stability. That was the question, they, they, they're stability. Looking at, as she said, no stability. Stability, financial stability. Spanish. The selectmen no, don't affect that. The, the town meeting is responsible for uh, the budget and what we spend. And the other thing they looked at, they look at, is how much do you have uh, set aside for a rainy day? And now we have something like, I think, four rainy day funds. We have the regular one, then we have the one for building, and we have the one for an ambulance. And so we've done everything. And in fact, um, at least last year, the bond rating um, had gone up. Does it help to have a town manager that's aware of what's going on and how this works? Does it help if the selectmen uh, are more fiscally aware. Luckily, we tend to have good people on our finance committee, and the people that are in charge of our finances are, if anything, um, very, they even ask, the new, we do have a new treasurer. Oh, well, is she going to bo borrow all of this at one time? And, uh, Jeff, we're going off on a tangent. And get back uh, on the accountant said. We're, well, this is a way off on a tangent now, I think, I, yeah. in my opinion. Well, just, you know, I, 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 I agree with that, what Cynthia is saying, though, is maybe just a little different way, is that 
they do look at stability. And you know, when you talk about rainy day funds, the first person to talk about it was Stephen Astis. Okay, about you know, getting money put aside, thinking of it as a business, that if your roof fell in, you need money. You know, and you know, and it allows us to have some money to plan for the un, for the unfortunate situations. But you know, th this comes down to a fact check in this election. The people that are saying all these things that are wrong are creating this problem. They're the ones that are putting the eyes on us by making statements that themselves know that it's a it's a, a stretch at best when they talk about multi-million dollar library and high school projects being built and the project has been impacted. No, it has not. How has it been impacted? It's still going, it's still ongoing. The, develop, the builder had sent a note in to know how he's gonna get paid. Okay, that's all the letter was. It wasn't a concern. MSBA is not threatening to shut the project down. They talk about transparency. There's one member of the Board of Selectmen right now that helped the town manager write his exit note that was posted in the penny saver. He told me this himself. He told me himself, Bob O'Regan helped me write it. And when, I, when Bob got done with it, this was the town manager's quote, it was much longer than mine. Okay, we have other people that are in this committee that have gone and been with the town manager, have helped him in his fights. You know, so, you know, don't tell me that you're, you know, the moral conscience of the town when you're doing exactly the same thing that you're accusing these other people doing. Now, you know, again, some members of the Board of Selectmen, you asked the advice, get your heads out of your ass and do the job that you said that you would do when you ran for office. We got so many people out here, and I can't say what I'd say because a lady is here, is let's just say that too many people are pumping their chest out here and think they're more important than the rest. And you know what? Every one of you people Thank you. represent us. It's the taxpayers. We're the ones paying the bill. They talked about last night having a special town meeting to vote $400,000 more for the library that they said was already funded. So wait a minute here. You know, I mean, so these are the people that are creating this problem. Okay, I mean, going through fact check, bullying. I mean, I've been bullied by people on the other side. I've been threatened. I was, when my son was being considered for a position in the police department, to them to get me to not be able to vote on the town manager being fired, I was challenged by one of the selectmen with an ethics violation. Two weeks later, they got the letter back and said that you're not in violation until your son is hired and given a, a contract letter. This person knew that, but it was a stall tactic. Okay, so, you know, these are the things that go on. The people should be ripped right now. If you are a moderate person, I look at myself as moderate, and uh, if you're moderate right now, you should be mad because this is a group that just wants to get their people in and start to call the shots for you. We have an election coming up in April. If they want to, tell them to focus their attention there. The residents and the taxpayers of this town, and let's face it, people, look at your tax bills, right? We all know they're going up. They're not going down. They're going up for good reasons. Look at the fight that we had to do just and thank the fire chief for getting us because we can't agree to do it. He got us a grant so we can get fully funded on the firemen and start to make these ambulances available and make money back. Um, you know, they talk about a motion was made to, to fire a longstanding counsel, KMP Law, and to hire a new one without signing a contract at the time. KMP didn't have a signed contract. So why would you sign it with the next guy? You know, see, these are the things that they're not, and the reason the KMP, and I was a part of that vote, was not, and they were never fired. We just decided to use Len Copeland, who was the founder of Copeland and Page, to be our council direct. So we took the founder of that firm that they're criticizing and hired him. Okay, so again, it's a factual thing. It wasn't a contract. There was never a contract. They just worked for a rate and they'd been with the town for years. We decided to use Len Copeland in other areas because some attorneys at this law firm were probably a little bit more communicative with the town manager than the Board of Selectmen. There was a, a, an issue of trust. So don't put these things out there when you don't know exactly what happened. I, so I listen to some of the responses and I hear that you're not necessarily for the recall. You don't agree with that sort of process, but you're not happy with the way things are going on the board and you know Tony I heard you say that specifically yeah, I, so, I, I, so I, I, I how do you kind of juggle the two positions where you're not happy but you know there is there are a group of residents seeking a remedy to 
potentially, mm -hmm. in their mind, fix the board. So how do you kind of balance the two? Well, no one's saying that they can't do the recall. No one's saying that they can't collect the signatures and, and, and do it. It's, it's part of democracy. Um, I, I think it was Tony's chance to speak. That's okay. No, 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 no. I mean, go I don't agree to the recall for the reasons that I stated right in the beginning. And this can put you all backfire on the recall petitioners or the, the people that are leading the recall petition. That can put you all backfire because back when we had the last election, there was a reason that David was elected and some of the, well, David was the main one who was elected. They kept their board three to two for the most part, which is everybody on the board likes to be on the up on winning side all the time. You have to learn to win and lose while on the board and be friends with your comrades. Uh, when that the whole thing happened to blow up that they named uh, Bill Rowe as the interim town manager, the whole thing was a total disaster, embarrassed for the town as a whole. But we are blue collar town and there was this few or small group of people that think we're white collar. We're never going to be and this is going to cost everybody a lot of money. People don't get involved for whatever reason, they don't care, but they're the ones who are going to pay the bill. And I think it's wrong for the recall, and I think this could very well backfire on those people that are doing the recall. And we're going to end up exactly where we were, nothing gets accomplished, and we're going to have a whole bunch of people mad at each other. And nobody wins in the end. Yeah, what if they, they, what if uh, they uh, respond to a couple of the uh, questions? What if this group Hold elects on, on. these three people that they think are going to follow in lockstep and they develop an independent mind once they get in the seats? Well, they'll be washed that's out a, like the rest of the people. That's another that backfire. You're right. So, I, 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 True. Yeah. I just want to touch a couple of points yeah. I think that Agreed. you would ask a couple of questions on. Uh, first of all, though, um, Cynthia seems to think there's no one that would come to the town and still look for a job. At $175,000, there's going to be a ton of people looking. Matter of fact, Easton, I believe, recently had something 50. like 57, I think I've written the paper, 50, 57 and people. And then Tommy was actually fired. You apply, had a contract. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying that there are people out there. That's not a problem as far as getting people to apply for a job. Um, but you've got to the other, the other thing is, right. the other thing I wanted to mention is, you, you, I think you had asked, well, why, you know, how does all um, get this three to two thing going on? I think. A lot of it goes right back to the fact that when uh, Chief Shastney was forced out of town, basically, all right, and that was the work. And I think you could ask Paul, you could ask chief, the chief, and he probably would tell you the same thing. The reason he had to leave was because of the actions of the town manager and Mr. O'Regan and Mr. Cooper. I was there. He was there too. And Paul Shastney would not compromise his integrity. He loved the town. He would he would have liked to have stayed here. But he wasn't going to compromise his integrity for, I guess, three people that gave him a hard time. Now, Paul has gone on, I'm sorry, Chief Chastain has gone on to Braintree. He's doing a hell of a job there. So you know, we lost a, a good person. He helped the police department. I mean, God knows. I mean, they're so professional. He, you know, these people went for training in every phase of police work. And so, I mean, we've got a great group there and attributed mostly to the work of Paul Chastity, Chief Chastity. So I think that's where a lot of this stuff started and people started taking hard, hard line positions. You also asked what could the town do to kind of uh, bring things a little better. And I think at the last meeting, uh, Mr. Nassus, who I, I agree was probably an excellent choice. Uh, and, uh, you know, for many reasons, you know, self-made millionaire, he's been in the town, he's uh, financially donated. I mean, the money he's, he, he's, a so, he's, a, he's been a stoughton person and he's a smart guy. I think what he did at the last meeting when he brought some people up there and said, give us an idea what's going on in the town. We had Mark Tisdale talk about the, all the stuff going on in the various cars, Street, Central yeah. Street, 138. People aren't hearing that stuff. And, and there was a few other people, Karen Clip gave some information. There were several people that got up and were talking about things. So there is a lot of positive things going on in the town. But the, these freaking people at the recall, they want you to think that the town's coming apart at the seams. Right. And I'm gonna, one more thing I just want to say, and then maybe the last thing I'll say, regarding Mr. Souza, okay? They're all over him. They, they uh, look down at him because he's not as well educated as they are and this stuff. But I'm going to tell you, if you have a problem and you want someone to look at something that's going on in the town as a resident, he's the guy you call. I was at a wedding uh, back in June, and the reception was in Plymouth. And there was a, um, 
a couple at the same table, it turns out the same table I was at that was Stoughton residents. And they got talking about, uh, not to recall that, but talking about Mr. Sousa uh, and how they called him to look at a problem. They were having flooding in the backyard and he got the right people to go there and they corrected the problem. Uh, recently, I had the occasion to be doing a job for a client on uh, Camp Nelly Way, a uh, uh, $25 million international corporation that's come to Stoughton from uh, Waltham. Great company, uh, high tech jobs, excellent. And they, they were trying to get through the, uh, the hurdles, if you will, of the town's procedures because, because of wetland issues and some other things. And they had a problem doing that. So I called Spanky and said, would you come down and look at the situation here and you know, maybe you give these guys a little guidance or maybe even say, hey, you know, this is a good you know, for, let's work with them and bring them more jobs. And they're, gonna put, they're putting on a 50 by um, 70 addition to this huge building that they already have. So while I was still working on the site at the time and the next day, Spanky shows up and he's got Mr. Tisdale with them. And they talked to the um, the people there showed them, you know, what they uh, should be thinking of doing, how to do it, and, you know, that type of thing. So the point was, he took his time, and it was just, uh, I just did a phone call, and he came out, brought the engineer out, and hopefully this company is now going to be able to get through, you know, the regulations and uh, that they need to do, and the town's going to benefit from having this huge addition, it's taxable, and they're going to be bringing in a lot of high-skilled workers and as Roy was saying earlier you know if, if you want the town to grow and if you're going to spend all this money on these various issues you've got to have some businesses in the the higher tech the, the job the better I mean you know you've got uh, machinists in here you've got uh, welders you, you've got fabricators and if you see if you took a walk through the inside of the equipment most of it's computerized so it's not like the old days with guys in the backyard with a welder and a but, he, but he's only a truck driver That's yeah so my point is you Ridiculous. know, there's a, there's a lot that goes into being a selectman. Everybody has a different style. Uh, I seem to think, uh, that's only two things I think off the top of my head, but uh, I see Spanky as a person that will go the extra yard if he has to. Uh, I, I, I like to think last, we all did yeah. that. Well, we all do. I, mean, I think everybody can I, I'm, I'm still, still doing it, and I'm not even on the board. Yeah. I just want, in the last, we have under five minutes to go, um, and... I just would like to allow you uh, a quick closing thought before we wrap up, and hopefully you'll all be judicious with your time so that everybody can have a, a chance uh, who would like one. So again, I'm just looking for a, any quick closing thoughts right. here. If I, and, I'll, and I'll try to be sure. I will be quick. <laughs> but you know, I just want to make sure that we get facts out. We don't even Okay, it introduce. should be about facts. You know, personal opinion is one thing. You know, they, they've talked about in here, why a recall? Because people aren't being allowed to have input and be heard at public meetings. I established the citizens' comments. Citizens' comments were designed for the residents to come before the Board of Selectmen and be able to bring something to the board's attention that couldn't wait until the next meeting so that they could get immediate action and department heads could help them the next day. It wasn't made so that the residents could come up and be heard on every issue and stand up and become the sixth selectman or that their information and their position was more important. That's why we have a Board of Selectmen to do the business of the town. The public has a right to be heard on public hearings. And this board has always made sure that everybody was heard during the session of public hearings. So again, this is their opinion because they can't be a part of every debate. They look at it and say the Board of Selectmen are not listening to the people. That's bull in plain English, I'm sorry. Sorry, Cynthia. All right, and this is what we've got to get away from. Read these things and make the people who sign this ad explain that to you, but let one of the selectmen go one-on-one -on -one with them so I, people can see it. You know, I, because again, there's a lot of facts that haven't been brought out. Few, few I, minutes left. I just want to say that it doesn't matter whether you're in favor or opposed. Please remember to vote. So many people said, oh, well, I didn't want to vote for the new school, so I stayed at home. And now they're calling me complaining about the $400 increase. Exactly. Oh, you, no, that was supposed to be two fifty. remember. Whether you're in favor or opposed, vote. You're only yourself to blame if later on you're upset about the results. I follow exactly what Dad Cindy was saying. 
please get out and vote. But before you vote, educate yourself and look at the facts like Joe stated. Why are you voting? And is my voting yes or no for the right reason or just to satisfy some people and go against others? Educate yourself before you vote and go out and vote. Don't stay home. Right. I would just say that uh, recalls in general are uh, very div divisive. We've seen this. We've gone down that road. We've been there th in this town. And we know that it takes a long time for healing mm -hmm. when, you, when this happens. People that are friends all of a sudden don't talk to one another. And it takes a long time that they get back together. This is probably the worst thing we could do to our town, you know, uh, at, at any point in time, especially now. And uh, think about that. Uh, let's not divide the town. And if someone told me, well, it's already divided. Yeah, but let's not throw gas on the fire. Let's not do I would just uh, like to close and say thank you, Jeff, for inviting me. I'm an outsider. Right. I think okay. the, okay. Uh, the thing is that, uh, I, for me, on the outside, um, and I agree with Joe, I think uh, Stephen Assis was the best asset that the town could have had at the time. I enjoyed being on the board with him. That bond issue was the only person that talked about that when I looked at Smack last night on the uh, rerun video on demand. Uh, he was the only one that brought that up. And it isn't whether we have a good auditor or a good treasurer. It's the te temper and temperament of the town that counts. If the town looks like it's in a disarray, special town meeting, recall election, it's not a very pretty picture when these people are looking at where do we invest our money. So I, I, I would want to see this $35 million bonding get swept under the rug in such a manner that it's going to cost us more money in the long run. Roy. Just a quick comment. Take a look at the ads that are being run. Take a look at the names that are at the bottom of them. And give them a call. You've heard a lot of facts tonight about, uh, about the recall. Call these people up and get them to uh, give you a response as to uh, why they should uh, vote for the uh, recall. That's it. Well, Good job, Jeff. Thank you. Well, Roy, <laughs> as somebody who hosts a show of your own, expertly done, giving me just enough time to sign off. So I just want to thank uh, Roy Cohen and Joe McCriskey and Cynthia Walsh and Antonio Souza, Ed DeFelice and John Anderson, six former selectmen who joined us on this episode of Stoughton Spotlight, a round table to uh, discuss the current issues in the town. So I want to thank you for tuning in and also CJ Mullen and Dave Young from SMAC for uh, making all the magic happen behind the scenes. And thanks once again, we will see you next time on Stoughton Spotlight.